Hello everyone and welcome to another video Dvar with Rabbi Chaitovsky here at BMHBJ. Uh, this week we have a double reading, the Torah portions of Matot and Mas'e. And uh, Mas'e, the second Torah portion, is essentially a travelogue of the Israelite people as they make their way in the final leg of their journey to the borders of Israel. Uh, but in Matot, the first of the two readings, uh, the Israelites have just uh, emerged victorious from a war with the Midianites. Uh, the Midianites, remember, are the ones who tried to seduce uh, the uh, Israelite men uh, and pave the way for all sorts of uh, God's anger at the Jewish people at the advice of Bilam. Uh, that, luckily, uh, only succeeded uh, minimally, uh, but uh, it did its damage. And now the Israelites, having emerged victorious from the battle against the Midianites, are now at the east bank of the Jordan River. All they have to do is cross the Jordan and get to the west bank, and then they will be closer to the borders uh, of Israel. Uh, they'll actually be in Israel. And two of the tribes, the tribe of God and the tribe of Ruvain, ask permission, because they had a lot of cattle and a lot of other flocks, and they see this really fertile land on the east side of the Jordan, they ask Moses for permission to settle in the east side of the Jordan River, ostensibly, and not cross over to the west side and engage with the rest of the nation. And Moses gets angry at them and says, are you going to stay behind here while the rest of the nation goes forth to do battle against the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. He gets really upset with them, and the tribes of God and Ruvain assure Moses that they have no intention of remaining behind. They will indeed fight. They just wanted permission to come back and have this land as the land in which they are going to live in the future. And Moses agrees. And indeed, the tribes did go fight. They fought for almost seven years against the nations who were already inhabiting that land. And we're told in the book of Joshua that after the victory took place, the tribes of Gad and Ruvain went back to the east side of the Jordan River and they erected a monument, a mizbeach, an altar. And Joshua hears about this and gets very upset. And he sends Pinchas, about whom we read last week, he sends Pinchas to the, uh, to the tribes of Gad and Ruvain and says, why are you setting up an altar here? There's already been a pronouncement that no sacrifices can be brought outside the land of Israel, outside of the Promised Land. And Gad and Ruvain say, we're not setting up a real altar. This is a symbolic altar. This is an altar that's going to help our children maintain a relationship with the rest of the nation in the land of Israel. We are essentially in Gola. We are essentially in the diaspora here. And the rest of the nation is in Israel. And there may come a time when the Israelite community in Israel will look at us and say, you're not really Jews, you're not connected to us. And this altar is a symbol of that connection that we have with the community in Israel. A connection to the community of Israel is very, very important, especially at this time of the year. A connection with Israel is always important because Israel always seems to be on the short end of a stick from PR perspective, at the, you know, at the short end of the stick against its enemies who are intent on destroying it. But even historically, even religiously, a connection to Israel is important. We are in the middle of the three weeks. Tomorrow, this Shabbat, marks the beginning of the month of Av. In another nine days, we're going to mark the fast of Tisha B'Av, the day in which both of our temples were destroyed and the day in which Jerusalem was sacked and we were exiled for more than 2,500 years until 1948 when Israel was ostensibly ours once again. How do we maintain a connection to ancient Israel? 
This is not like Passover, where we were persecuted and we won. This is not like Hanukkah or like Purim, where we were persecuted and oppressed and we won. We were oppressed, we were persecuted by the Romans, by the Babylonians, and we lost. This is a very hard part of our history to remember. It's very hard to buy into, but remember it we must. And this week's Torah portion and the aftermath of the story of the two tribes who wanted to be on the East Bank and still maintain that connection to their brothers and sisters in Israel itself. It's simply a model for what we must do. It's a model for all the laws of Tisha B'Av that ask us to sit on the floor and mourn for the temple and buy into the history of our people and be sensitive to that history and recall that history and even live that history at least once a year. This Torah portion, this time of the year, very significant for us. And the Torah portion should help us understand the significance of the land of Israel, not just for the ancient Israelites, and not just for those who were exiled from the land of Israel in the destruction of the two temples, but that connection should be important for us as well in 2015. May you have an easy fast, a Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you in Shul.